Actually, the book is always, I mean, when you choose your, a book, it's a personal thing because it's based on your taste and what you want to read. No? But what I meant was it became really personal for Filipinos because they began to be able to read books about them, about their lives, about their realities. Uh, but I also wanted more Filipino writing to be read by Filipinos. Beginning her career in the 1970s as an editorial assistant in one of the fastest growing book chains in the Philippines at the time, National Bookstore, Karina was open to anything and everything that was asked of her. When I started uh, in the industry, I was 23. I wasn't even married yet. Maybe it was not explicitly said to me, but the thing I got was to be open to many things, to everything actually. So, uh, as I said, if I resented doing things that were not in my job description, I wouldn't have learned. No? Uh, they would ask me to write the speeches for Nana Kuring and other, other uh, heads there. Uh, I would be asked to evaluate. Uh, submissions even if you know it is not so whatever the challenge was or what seemed to be initially as problems uh, were actually opportunities to learn everything no? so you you learn the entire process not just as an editor but even other things even you know getting quotations from printers to help uh, the production manager so and, uh, and that kind of familiarized me with the entire publishing cycle. No. After a decade in National Bookstore, Karina would go on to found Anvil Publishing, the book chain's publishing arm. Its mandate, according to Karina, was to produce as many local books as possible. It was in this time that Karina built up most of her stunning portfolio, nurturing talented writers, publishing culturally important books, and championing Filipino literature. Some of the first books that she handled were Nick Joaquin's Cave in Shadows and Inochka Rosca's State of War, two texts that, aside from being memorable to Karina, would also be valuable and indispensable to Filipino storytelling and identity making. No one's trained for book publishing. No one is trained for manuscript evaluation. Maybe the good thing was, it was barren soil. I mean, there was hardly anything that was local. So my, my, our goal at Anvil when we started it was to uh, parallel all the genres and categories of imported books that were in national because there were no uh, counterpart Filipino books. So it was, a, it was a great time. I would call it, for me, the most productive of my my career because that was 26 years and because I was open to many things, to everything, uh, new genres, new ideas, new writers. Uh, we produced you know, books, it was almost like 100 a year you know, that we were able to produce and in all categories. We started the, we started the Lad Lad series at the time. Um, we started the discussion of, uh, of sex scientifically and clinically with the Margie Holmes series. Uh, we, we, we started people like Ambeth Ocampo, Jessica Safra, no? so uh, uh, even New Age titles. So we were open to, to everything. Uh, I think it was a most exciting time because there was nothing and here you were encouraging local writers to write about everything Filipino so that readers could relate more you know, to what was what they were being what they were being uh, what they were reading in books that experience uh, I think sharpened my my sense for knowing what could be published Uh, the press already had, a, I think, a name, uh, especially during the time of Mrs. Pacheco and uh, uh, Maricor. I, I just felt that maybe they had to 
they were producing very important and landmark titles for the different for Philippine studies, no, uh, and in different and in different fields. If we are contributing to nation building, which is the mission and of the university, uh, if our books are all in the warehouse, the, no one is reading the books. Certainly, we're not contributing to helping the university mission. No? We're not contributing to nation building. So that was my point. It's important that books are out, maybe not sold, if not, cannot be sold, but they have to be in libraries and read. Now, it felt good to be, you know, for your lifetime work to be recognized. Uh, I think it's a very, it's a vibrant publishing community right now. There's so many young publishers uh, and in the regions and publishing in the mother tongues, in the different languages. So this is a very good outcome. I mean, for what we started and it's, it's here now, I think it's great to see that. We all build on each other's achievements or work accomplishments, whatever we've done. But you just have to, I always say, keep being open to, to possibilities, to new things. Uh, not be bogged down by what has worked, what's the, what has worked before. These are the only categories that are existing. You, you cannot have something that's not in this category. It's never been done before. Is, a, is actually a, a sign of, you know, then it must prob probably it ought to be done, no? It's being open, I think, to possibilities. And part of that, you owe it to your, to growing your culture, your cultural uh, artists, your culture bearers, no? all these artists. And we have books for everything, for music, for art, for dance, for, so we, we, and especially, of course, for writers, no? for literature.